Good morning. Uh, this is Pastor Duncans, and you're not in the Twilight Zone. Uh, we had a few moments ago, I just did our devotion, but we had a lot of freezing on our internet. They're working in our area, so we now had to boost the connection. And I really want this message to be heard in its entirety. There was a lot of times it was freezing. It was not you. It was us. These are the times we're living in. And so those of you that have heard this message, you don't have to worry about it. But I want to make sure the message is given in its entirety. So I'll, I'll say it again, and we'll start from here. Again, um, we have been living in this pandemic for a few weeks now. We're all getting comfortable that our God can handle it. We've all made our adjustments in our prayer life and our scriptural reading and our church life and the way we present it. But I was thinking about how heavy my heart was last night and I couldn't go to sleep. So I started writing. And so I'm going to present this, my feelings, and I'm going to present this little op-ed that I'm going to place on our website. And it's entitled, We Can't Breathe. And so let me read it again. I can't breathe. When I watched in horror the murder of another unarmed African-American man at the hands of law enforcement, shouting these words, I can't breathe, I went numb. I had an eerie feeling in the pit of my stomach when I realized that even in the midst of this seemingly legitimate national sentimentality that we are all in this together pertaining to our fight against the coronavirus pandemic, we as African-Americans once again found ourselves disenfranchised from the security of that statement. Even the pandemic is no match for the structural and systemic racism that is so pervasive that it has reached epidemic proportions through a heightened sense of normalization over the last few years. Make no mistake about it, African Americans have seen so many Trojan horse promises built on the rhetoric of democratic equality and the ideals of, an, of American patriotism. And this patriotism always seems to cost us more than it gives. We are just expected to accept the fact that racial injustice has been the de facto rule to our country and all the civil rights legislation in the world can't balance the scales when the interpretation and administration of the law and justice is in the hands of unjust men and women. Nowhere are racial inequities more prevalent than in our criminal justice system, which includes our court systems, our prisons, and the violent policing that is done in communities of color. I'm not going to waste time presenting the numerical facts that show a blaring, intentional, systemic bias and discrimination that happens in every area of our criminal justice system to us. No, I'm here to report that the civil unrest, the violent protests, the universal hurt that has crossed geographic lines and exploded in people of color in over 22 cities is a line drawn in the sand. People are tired, tired of being afraid. People are tired of being singled out. People are tired of the hypocrisy that our country calls due process. And we are saying loudly, I've had enough. A few weeks ago, I was preparing my midweek Bible study where I've been in a series from the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus expoused and communicated the heavenly principles we are to follow and walk by to live in the kingdom of God. Matthew 5 through 7 is filled with a picturesque language and a divine instructions that show the meteoric divide between how God intended for us to live and how we are living. What made this moment so intense was my study was interrupted by a phone call saying that an unarmed 25-year-old African-American man named Ahmad Aubrey had been shot while jogging. Now, the last week has been filled with Intense rioting and looting, which is an overexpression and feeling coming from those who are repressed. And two statements that you've heard, I used one I used yesterday in my early morning talk before our broadcast. And the two statements that echo during this time is one that was said, one, one quote from Will Smith that is so appropriate 
Racism is not getting worse, it's getting filmed. And then, of course, the second is Dr. King. In his speech, he said, riots are language of the unheard. But it is the progression in this speech, the next part, that I'm intrigued with. He said, what is it America is not hearing? That is where we are today, church. I want to make sure the church is acting and hearing. We as a church can't deny that we have the answer. We are the only ones who can bring a spirit of deliverance and a spirit of freedom. Only God can break the chains of oppression in a discriminated in a society that discriminates. Um, I was in Luke chapter four, verse eighteen. I'll I'll give you the text. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he anoint, he anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for those who are blind and to set the oppressed free. There's the answer. Jesus was concerned. No one was more concerned about freedom, about social justice, about fighting injustice and poverty and those in the poor. No one has the answer but the church of God. Listen to those, how he said it. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, me meaning us, the church. He has anointed me, you and me, to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind and to set the oppressed free. I was looking at my wife's yearbook. She went to Morgan State. And in there, I was intrigued because I looked at the first five presidents of that major black university were all doctors of divinity, all practice, all preachers. We know that the civil rights movement was not was done by those who understood and had the spirit of God and the spirit of unity. There were even ecumenical movements at that time. We had rabbis and imams and Christian priests and Catholic priests, excuse me, and, and pastors, Protestant pastors, all coming together. And the message came out in the word and it got done. James chapter 1, verse 26 through 27, NIV. Those who consider themselves religious, yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues, deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. But look at the, verse 27. Religion that God expects, God accepts, is pure, faultless, and is to look after orphans and widows and those in distress and keep us from being polluted by the world. Finally, the most poignant or glaring statement that Jesus made was in James 2, and I'll just read verse 17. Faith without works is dead. We need to work. We need to act. How do we act? First, we must pray. Prayer is our power. We must be guided by the Holy Spirit, which the world does not have. We can't act like the world acts. We got to be there to pick up the pieces with our prayer and with our actions. How do we act? We invite this discussion into our churches. We make sure that we're not just worshiping and saying hallelujah and wanting people to shout and pay homage to the message we have without bringing them the reality of touching them. We need to make sure that we are feeding the poor, excuse me, feeding the hungry, ministering to the poor, setting those who are oppressed free, doing the best we can to break the, all the chains that the enemy is trying to put in our life. When I was growing up, uh, every injustice was met by an assembly at the church. The Boy Scouts met at the church. The, when there was a riot, aftermath of the riot, we met in the basement of the church. Why? Because that is the symbol of power. Today, church, I'm just telling you that when you get a Eric Garner in 2014 saying, I can't breathe, and now six years later, we have a George Floyd saying, I can't breathe, both murdered at the hands of police. And then you have a people rioting with this over-expression of their hurt, then it means we can't breathe. That's the message I want to say. Make sure, church, we let them say, we can't breathe, but we got the answer. Christ is the answer for the oppressed. God bless you, Mr. Pastor Duncan.